this film is inspirational, informational, and motivational. Touching, impactful, and heartfelt. I think it's absolutely critical. It's a timeless piece. It's something that 20 years from now, this movie will stand the test of time and tell true history about the fight. Yeah, this film is important today because it reminds us of the exalted position that the church has in the world. That just because the church is in the world doesn't make the church equal to the state. One thing that you'll notice from the film is that it's going to take you back centuries in church history and remind you that the church has fought these battles with the state over centuries. So this isn't anything new. So it's important for folks to watch this film to be reminded that the church and the state are two separate entities and that the state has no authority on dictating how the church worships. Man, I had my eyes on the screen the entire time. I don't think I really moved at all and I couldn't wait to see a little bit more of the emotion behind what it was like to go to jail, what it's like to retell the story of the Covenanters is fantastic. It's a story of how the church has stood against overweening government power, irrational government power at times when the world has gone mad. And so it's a classic story that will you'll stay with you. We need people to know why we need the church. I mean, I didn't understand why we need a church until COVID happened. This movie just brought all that back again and it actually got me a little emotional about that time again. And just, I, got, I became so grateful to the Lord that he actually put the church through that to show us who the true church is. I know it's gonna, this movie is gonna make an impact for, for, my, for years to come. The Lord is faithful and I liked how they, they focused in on that, that it was God who sustained his church, not what any men did or any women did, but it was the Lord that truly sustained it. So. To my surprise, I think, and I think viewers will find this out after the film concludes, that the film is less about Grace Community Church and more about the church universal. And this recent situation with Grace Community Church and the uh, COVID restrictions is just one in a long line of battles that the evangelical church has had to fight. What I absolutely love was the fact that they brought history and they brought it to the point where it shows that history really repeats itself. And I love the fact that they put the gospel in this film and I think that's truly what you should do is just buy tickets for everybody and, and have them hear the gospel in the form of this particular story of a trial and tribulation that turned out to be such a blessing. Like I really just want to urge everyone to go see the film. You'll go to EssentialChurchMovie.com, enter your zip code, and you can find out what theater near you is showing the film. The film opens nationwide Friday, July 28th. I really have to encourage you to make your way, even if you have to drive a distance, to go and see this film. This film is that important. So today is July 28th. My name is Tim, the BTWN guy, and you're watching my YouTube channel. And the thumbnail is interesting. I knew it would get your attention. There's something in this movie that is so transparent that it is blowing away a whole bunch of people. I was very surprised uh, with how transparent Grace Community Church was or is in the movie in regards to conflict, disunity, even amongst their own elders. That's what this video is about. And it's also obviously a promotion. You need to go and watch the movie. If you're intrigued with how the elders came to the conclusions they did, that's another reason why I look forward to seeing the movie and another reason why I'm sure you want to see the movie. If you appreciate what I'm doing here, click on the, uh, in the description of this video, you can click on, uh, the link to support what I do here. Uh, it'll take you to this page. You can give monthly or you can give a one-time gift. Uh, if you do that, you can see all my YouTube videos before they drop on YouTube without advertising. So please consider doing that. In theaters today, July 28th. It's interesting. I'm going to show you some content that I did three years ago. It's almost three years ago right now when Grace Community Church re-officially reopened their church. 
And uh, that's kind of the storyline of what I'm about to share with you. That I have watched three interviews today, links to all three interviews in the description of this video. One with the Babylon Bee. An interesting uh, takeaway from this interview is that this individual who interviewed him is actually a member of Grace Community Church. Perhaps, I, I think he might be in the seminary or I'm, I'm not sure, but he has connection to Grace Community Church and the Babylon Bee. He has written for the Babylon Bee, um, and he makes that clear in this interview. Um, that was my least favorite interview that I watched. A better interview is this one that's on the Masters University um, YouTube channel. And <laughs> interestingly enough, it's have you wondered if your life experience it's the same guy interviewing him now we've got to go through an advertisement here so let me uh but anyway it's the same guy interviewing pastor john but i like this interview way better than the babylon b1 um so i would strongly encourage you to watch this one um a chat with our chancellor dr john MacArthur, speaks on the film and there's a lot of good information on this one. And the third interview that I watched today was my friend Justin Peters, who interviewed uh, John MacArthur and also the producer of the movie. And a couple things came out in this interview and really the thumbnail and the idea that the elders were not unified during um, this COVID experience is fascinating. It's fascinating to Justin Peters. It's fascinating to me. And it's the reason why I made the thumbnail and another reason to go watch the movie. Indeed. John, of course, obviously, Grace Community Church and other churches like it that also opened up in defiance of the government restrictions and lockdowns, you face criticism from that end. Uh, you know, you're killing people you don't care about, you know, elderly and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you're not loving your neighbor. Uh, but interestingly, there's been some criticism from kind of the other side of the theological and ecclesiological aisle, if you will, saying that Grace Community Church should have never shut down, not even not even for a week. Uh, one, one of the things that struck me about the film was the transparency that was there in regards to how the elder board there uh, worked its way through these issues because it was not a unified elder board initially as to whether or not uh, Grace Community Church should open up. So two things, can you walk us through that a little bit, that process within your own elder board, that struggle? And also, what would you say to those who criticize you from the other side saying, well, you should never have shut down in the first place at all? <laughs> I I don't think he's talking about me. But I was a person who did that. This is my video that I made almost exactly three years ago. Hero or Hopelessly Late, John MacArthur on Church Reopening. And there's going to be a link to this in the description as well. That's a, a three-year younger me. Um, and I encourage you to listen to it at uh, 1.75 speed. I sound really smart. Otherwise, you'll get bored with me. But... Um, I, I, I made the video. I I'm like, you know, for so long, John MacArthur has not had ch officially had church. And, uh, you can see in, in my video where that, where I'm, I'm recounting that Grace Community Church shut down. And then pastor John, I believe, uh, on one Sunday, they showed him at a desk. He might have been at home. And then the next Sunday, I think they put his desk on the stage, uh, on the podium, uh, in the sanctuary. And then the third week, he was standing at the pulpit. And for a couple months, he preached from the pulpit, and the church was not officially open. And there are things going on that I was completely unaware of. And that are fascinating that now come to light in this movie. 
Well, yeah, and the, the, the reason we shut down in the first place for the brief period that we did was because we were told um, that people are going to die in the millions. It was it was the same as if they said there's a hurricane coming, you know, send your people to the basement or something. Yeah. We, we didn't know. And the, and the terminology people will remember was 15 days to slow the spread. You know, this is temporary. Oh, OK, so th they were th they got us hooked on that. It's just going to be a couple of weeks. And then they kept drawing it out and drawing it out. It was um, I, I think it was a sensible thing to say we don't want to harm people. And uh, we had a couple of medical doctors on our elder board who said, look, what we hear is that they're going to overrun the hospitals and uh, there's going to be such a mass of people who are ill with this COVID that the hospitals aren't going to be able to absorb them and that would be a disaster. So let's wait and see what really unfolds. And it was about two or three weeks after that that I knew that that was not the case. The evidence was coming in. It was coming to me just by my own observation and also from some people in the medical world who were telling me the truth. And as soon as we knew that, we said, we've got to we've got to meet. But we also realized that we had all these terrified people in our congregation who had been purposely frightened of this thing. Nothing is real. Nothing is real. Nothing is real. OK, that's not true. Some stuff is real, but I'm not. Believe it or not, I'm making All right, we are donating to Justin Peters um, YouTube channel by watching that <laughs> advertisement there back to church and just override their natural fears i just began to say to people uh, that i met personally with or talked to on the phone come to church yeah just come to church and so there would be 50 100 500 and after a few weeks a thousand two thousand three thousand they came back on their own yes and that's the only way that i felt we could do that and not, you know, n not just sort of dominate people in a in a fearful setting. And what happened was when they began to hear from their friends that they were together, they were healthy. The the L.A. Health Department had to put on their website there was no COVID outbreak at Grace Community Church. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a massive problem for them. You know, they said you can't be together because everybody's going to get sick. We had hundreds and then thousands and we didn't have an, a break an outbreak at all so i think it was just um i didn't want to force people i wanted them to respond in a way that was on their own volition that's how you have to respond to any pandemic in any situation any reality about the difficulty of life and the dangers of just walking out of your house uh -huh. uh, so they began to come back and they began to realize this wasn't what it was threatened to be and the church began to fill up and fill up. And in the process, the elders are talking about, when do we do this officially? And it came to a point where we had a church full of people, but we hadn't officially declared we were open. Mm -hmm. And I loved that. I mean, that that was what I wanted. I didn't want the top down saying, you got to come to church. I wanted the people to say, we're going to be at church. Yeah. And uh, the elders finally caught up to the people. Right, right. Well, I, th I thought it was really a fascinating insight when it, it showed, um, you know, like Mike Riccardi had a significant part in talking about how he came to a, a right understanding of Romans 13. And, and um, uh, Mike is an elder who was not agreeing with uh, John MacArthur on the interpretation of Romans chapter 13 uh, by reading some sermons or writings from Martin Lloyd-Jones. Mm -hmm. um, how long did that process take for you as an elder board and to come to a unanimous decision to open Well, up? it took a few months. Um, I think it was March when the lockdowns hit, and it was July, so April, May, June of this process is going on. And we don't, you know, as elders, we're, we're not really meeting. We're trying to Zoom call, and that doesn't work well. We're not meeting. <laughs> as elders on Sunday, which we normally do. We're not meeting at our normal elders meeting, the Zoom meeting occasionally. So trying to get everybody together and, and make the case was was challenging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was it was July when we said we're open. But by then, 
the church was filled with people. They had come back on their own because that fear began to diminish. Yeah. And sure. Mike, Mike was wrestling. Mike Riccardi was wrestling with the issue of Romans 13. Uh, the powers of be ordained of God, and so we submit to the government. And what Lloyd Jones had pointed out in his commentary on Romans, and what I always had strong convictions about, was that we obey the government when the government functions in the territory given to it by God. Yes. You don't want the government coming in and telling you how to parent your children, although they would like to do that, and they're working hard to do it now. They would like to isolate your children from you as parents. Yep. But you you fight that. You don't want the government running your church. And uh, so Mike was wrestling with the Romans 13 thing. And through the reading of Lloyd-Jones, I thought Mike was, uh, it was wonderful the way he was honest about saying, you know, I had to change my thinking. I had to see yeah. things a different way. And so that was part of the process with the elders. It wasn't that they were... Um, it wasn't that they were, you know, sort of stonewalling us. It was that, help me understand this. You had a medical doctor who was saying, uh, you know, help me understand this, if this is going to be what they say it is. And you have a theologian like Mike saying, okay, help me with Romans 13. And that yeah. process went on for a, a, a couple of months, and everybody was satisfied at one point, and we all just said, this is it. We're, we're opening up unanimously. Yeah. Yep. Two two different issues there. Is COVID real? Some you know, the impact of COVID and then the theological aspect of it were the two points that the elders needed to work through. Um Justin Peters also interviewed the producer who had uh, this to say about this topic. It's like, okay, well it's this isn't what they said it was. This isn't what that guy said it was. The train's not coming. So we need to understand that and move accordingly from there. So I think he did the right thing initially to for those first two weeks to heed the warning. We weren't giving um, ownership of the church to anybody, but we were heeding a warning that was given to us. Um, and they were unanimous in that. The problem was, and this is why the film's interesting, in my opinion, especially the part of Grace Church. The problem was, is now that they were unanimous to close or, or to, yeah, to heed the warning, to be unanimous to get open back up. Well, that's another cup of tea. Yeah. That was a lot harder. Yeah, so now yeah. they're in a, they're in this boat of disunity, and they have to find a way to become unanimous. And I just think the tension and the conflict that conflict of that is very interesting. And I think that most people aren't expecting that to be in the film, and it actually is. And I think they'll find it very interesting. Yeah, I mean, yep, very interesting because um, Grace Community Church doesn't really share that type of interaction. They don't. They 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 keep it private they keep it within their uh local fellowship they don't throw it out there for the the world to see and um it, it's fascinating and it's pretty neat i look forward to seeing it and i'm glad that grace community church was um open with that i'm glad that they were transparent with that because it it helped the the it helps to see that you know, it wasn't uh, any, no decisions were being made that uh, weren't very carefully thought out by 40 men. All 40 elders said, let's close. And then it took some time for the elders all to be unified to say, okay, let's officially open. And again, even though they weren't officially open, and even though we were watching John MacArthur from the pulpit, they weren't showing the audience. And it, there were actually uh, thousands of people there, which when it happened, I, I <laughs> this video is, is just, I, I was watching parts of it today. This is when they first, they officially opened and they, they started showing the, the congregation. And I was like, wait, <laughs> wait a minute that there it's full. <laughs> um, and uh, I don't know. I, I, I think it's, all extremely interesting uh link to all those videos um in the description of this video and of course the link to go and uh find out where the movie is being shown uh near you uh, if you if you love grace community church you want to support them and um be an encouragement to them and see a great movie um go go and buy your tickets 
and uh, go to the movie and be encouraged. Um, lots of great stuff. I could I could share a whole lot whole lot more, but it, it's all in those interviews, and uh, I encourage you to go and take take advantage of them. All right. Leave your comment below. Subscribe if you haven't already. By leaving a comment and giving a thumbs up, um, that helps YouTube to know that people are interested in this, and then they'll share it with more people. Uh, Till my next video, my prayer is that God would bless each and every one of you. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.